Okay, I wanted to welcome everyone. We're going to talk tonight about how to live a toxin free lifestyle. And everyone who just got on or as you're coming on, if you could just hit the mute button on your either your phone or um, if you're on a screen on the lower left hand corner, you're going to see a microphone. And when you click on that, that will mute you out. So you should still be able to hear me or um, and uh, but then the recording will be clean so we'll have be able to hear um, when people listen later maybe dogs barking and dishes being done and all of that kind of stuff so this is kind of one of my uh, pet topics to talk about the toxins in um, the world that we live in about 10 11 12 years ago I really had no clue and when I think about all the chemicals that I used you know for cleaning laundering um, just perfumes that I'd put on my body, even while I was pregnant uh, with my kids through both pregnancies, it just, it literally makes me shudder now. And I can't help but wonder in hindsight if maybe I didn't sort of start something that they ended up coming out having some problems with. So um, I'll never know for sure, but I do have that thought in the back of my mind. So anytime that I can share some of the stuff that at least is becoming more common knowledge, at least there are people out there writing blog posts about this. There's a lot more science that's being shared on, on what we know. It's no longer being hidden, allowed to be hidden, I guess, by the chemical company. So, um, so we're just gonna talk about how to have a healthy home and how to reduce the impact of toxic chemicals in our world. Can everybody see, nod, nod your head, Faith, you can see my screen. You can see the slideshow, okay. So here's kind of um, what you can expect about tonight. There's just, we're gonna learn about, you know, is it really a big deal that chemicals are harmful? What are some of the key ones that we can at least try to identify when we're looking at different th products that we might be wanting to purchase in the store or maybe choose to not purchase in the store? And then some simple strategies like, okay, well now that I, you've scared me to death with the things that I need to watch out for, what is within my power to be able to do and and then we really just want you to be able to see that through baby steps this is certainly something that any person can start on this journey to do and um, so we always start out with remembering when and you know these younger generations aren't going to be able to remember when but I mean there was a time when the home was actually one of the safer places to be but you know today we live in an environment that's pretty different from maybe 50 years ago. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, the world is better. Children are living longer and, and healthier lives, generally speaking, than the children of previous generations. We've wiped out a lot of um, childhood diseases um, and infant mortality rates have, have gone down, but we still have a lot of our own issues. And whether we like it or not, we've got chemicals all around us and the, the amount of chemicals or the number of exposures that we might have in places that we've never even would have imagined. I mean, like toothpaste, for goodness sakes. Um, chemical substances are just part of our everyday life and they're a major, major part of our economy in our communities and in our homes. And you know, while they do have some benefits, there's some chemicals that are particularly beneficial to have around, um, there are also a lot of harmful side effects that if they are not properly managed, can really cause some problems, cause some serious problems. And um, just today, Deborah Bolsell, I think that that's how you pronounce her last name, she shared this really great link to Real Simple Magazine, and it was about how, um, talking about how NYU Langone Medical Center says that all of the toxins that are in our world and our environment are costing 340 billion, that's a billion with a B, a year in healthcare costs and lost earnings. That means that the impact of people having these chemicals in their lives are either making them sick enough to generate dollars in the healthcare system or that they'd have to lose dollars because they're no longer able to function in the workplace or they're staying home sick because uh, the chemicals have somehow had a direct impact. So we have to look at our food because food is something we've got to eat every single day. And there are chemicals in everything. I mean, aspartame, high fructose corn syrup, MSG, food coloring, preservatives. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's so many of the additives. 
We also find it in gardens. Um, it used to be doing your own garden. That was kind of the easy organic way to do things. And the, even if you move into a house that's been previously owned and you're getting all excited because there's a raised bed garden already in place and all you have to do is just plant your seeds, you don't know what's in that soil. You have no idea what kind of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, fertilizers, and so forth that may have been used. So it's no longer just sun and rain that's in our gardens. Now let's talk about our homes. A lot of people spend a lot of like restorative time in their homes, and yet we're finding that they're filled with chemicals. Where do the chemicals come from? It comes from our, our cleaners, um, you know, our personal care products. Um, it's in our pots and pans, for goodness sakes. And all of this stuff can negatively impact our health and the environment. So, I mean, of course, we're made up of chemicals. Our, we're not talking about um, you know, an essential oil is technically a chemical, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about the harmful chemicals that can really negatively impact our health and our environment. So again, they're just all around us in lots of places that we might not have imagined. So this slide is about the dirty dozen. I'm not going to even try to pronounce all of these, but I wanted you to see that um, these are some of the more commonly found chemicals um, and I'm just gonna maybe highlight a couple of them. Um, I, let's see, how about phthalates? That's number four. So the, the phthalates are kind of a big deal because it seems like every product out there these days is in some way scented. It has a fragrance or a perfume of some kind. And one of my rules of thumb that I adopted about 10 years ago, and, and I started on this journey because my kids had really terrible, terrible asthma. And so it became very important that whatever they were breathing in wasn't something that was further aggravating their asthma because I might be able to get them calmed down with whatever the medications were that the doctor was giving me. And then I'd bring them back home and what I was cleaning with, things that I put, was putting on my body, even... Um, bath soaps and stuff that I was bathing them in were causing problems and I just didn't know what I didn't know. So anytime you see a product and you look at the list of ingredients, you might see 5 million ingredients on that list, but if you see the word parfum, P-A-R-F-U-M, or if you see the word fragrance, put it back on the shelf because not only could it be something that would be triggering some respiratory problems, that's often linked to things like migraines. Um, some people get brain fog from it. Um, it can just make you feel kind of icky. And more importantly, we're making connections now, or scientific community is making connections now between in, you know, having these fragrances, inhaling them, and the impact that it has on the endocrine system. Well, guess what? The endocrine system kind of controls the hormones, and the hormones control absolutely everything else. So you ever wonder why the rate of infertility is so high among what should be otherwise healthy young adults these days? It's, it's potentially linked back to the massive amount of chemicals that um, these young people are being exposed to. So then you've got things like... Um, you know, BHA, BHT, you're going to see that in your moisturizers, parabens. A lot of people are a lot more savvy about parabens, and there's a lot more products out there on the market that say that it's, it's paraben-free. But one thing that you need to know about that is that it could interfere with male reproductive function. So that's something that you really want to pay attention to. You know, for your guys, if you have teen boys, you want to be paying attention to that kind of thing. Um, PEG, P-E-G, is something that has been linked to more serious health type things, and that would be uh, cancer. So just, you know, they're just things that you just want to avoid in general. Sodium lauryl sulfate, that's kind of like an engine degreaser, and that's kind of the agent that makes things get all foamy and soapy. Um, it's also... Um, it's in all kinds of household cleaning, dish soaps, that kind of thing. The triclosan, this is one of my big top pet peeves. This is in toothpaste, which makes me crazy. And you find it in just about any antibacterial uh, hand soap. So a lot of people think they're doing themselves a favor by buying that antibacterial soap, but 99.9% .9 chance is it's got the agent that makes it antibacterial is triclosan. And you even find it in cosmetics and it's in antiperspirants. And not only is it a suspected endocrine disruptor, 
Um, but it also has been thought to be contributing to antibiotic resistance bacteria. So um, there's been a ban, the Canadian Medical Association has called for a ban on the antibacterial consumer products um, that have the triclosan in it. So if you want to look into this a little bit more, you can download, there's something called the Dirty Dozen Backgrounder, and it was written by a, a guy named David Suzuki. So that's something that you could go and find yourself. So um, we know that these chemicals are a proven risk to our health and to our environment. And we know it's bad stuff. And we can choose to keep them, or some of us do choose to keep them. And I have to ask myself why. Or we could choose to empower ourselves and to try to choose something else. And some chemicals that are safe, that, that would be natural, we might combine them with something that might be in the category of not so safe, and we don't know of that chemical interaction that could happen between a safe chemical and then what would be an unsafe chemical. So it's generally a good idea just to stick with the safer ones. But here's some of the things that, um, you know, today people face hazards that were just kind of unheard of a couple of decades ago and we're at risk to exposure to thousands of new synthetic chemicals because there's more than 80,000 new chemicals that have been invented since World War II. 80,000 chemicals, that's a lot. And most of these chemicals did not previously exist in nature. And so they have been circulated widely into our environment. And so you gotta ask yourself, okay, well, what's the big deal? Why are these chemicals such a big threat? Well, absorption, of course. When, anytime we get synthetic chemicals that can in, enter the body, either through ingesting it, like through a toothpaste, um, on your lipstick, something like that, we're inhaling it because it's an aromatic type of thing, or if we're applying it into the skin, I'm telling you, whatever you put on your skin is managing to get through to your bloodstream. You know, infants are at risk of exposure in the womb and also through breast milk. So there is mass production of these chemicals, over 4 billion, billion with a B again, pounds of toxic chemicals are released into the nation's environment every single year. And that includes 72 million pounds of recognized carcinogens. 72 million pounds of recognized carcinogens. And of course, we just don't have enough testing because only a fraction of these chemicals have ever been tested for toxicity. And then we just need more studies on this. And I, why these studies aren't being done, I don't have any idea. So of course, then there's the heavy use of pesticides. There's over 1 billion pounds of pesticides that are used in the US each year. And about 5.6 billion pounds are used around the world. And the U.S. Department of Agriculture has estimated that 50 million people in the United States obtain their drinking water from groundwater that's potentially contaminated by pesticides and other agricultural chemicals. And these chemical pesticides are used on lawns, gardens, inside homes, schools, daycare centers, and hospitals. So, uh, hey guys, you want to uh, mute yourself then when you're you're getting on, please. So there's a lot of um, references that you can find out there. And then, of course, there's environmental persistence. There's a lot of chemicals that they don't, you know, put them on the ground and then poof, they evaporate. These, a lot of these toxic chemicals, they're going to persist in the environment for decades and even centuries. And there have been some really um, interesting and kind of disturbing studies that have happened where they were testing, um, like, uh, blood levels of, of people just in search of chemicals, even in urine, and they were finding some chemicals that didn't even exist. I mean, like haven't existed for 30 years, like they've been banned for 30 years. So there is some persistence in some of these chemicals. So then uh, let's, let's look at, um, according to the Centers for Dis Disease Control and Prevention, that's the CDC, more than 200 high volume synthetic chemicals can um, excuse me, can be found in the bodies of nearly all Americans. That's what I was just talking about. And this includes that cute little baby you see on that screen. That includes newborn infants. Of the top 20 chemicals that are discharged into the environment, nearly 75%, 75% of these tw top 20 chemicals are known or suspected to be toxic to the developing human brain. 
Now I want you to think about the world that we live in, all the different brain type issues that our little children and young people are experiencing and tell me, can you connect a few dots here? So from the moment a child is born, over 200 potential chemicals are coursing through their body. So let's talk terms. There's a few terms that you may have heard of, and, um, but if not, let's just do a quick review before we take a, a quick look at some of the chemicals. So we've got endocrine disruptors, carcinogens, and bioaccumulation. I talked already a little bit about endocrine disruptors, but basically what it can impact is developmentally, so that means we'd be considering younger people, reproductive things, it can disrupt that natural cycle that we want to happen in the reproductive system. It can impact neurological, immune effects, and you know whether we're talking about um, humans or whether we're talking about things in wildlife, that's still a problem any way you look at it. And then carcinogens. Well, carcinogen means it's something that has the ability to be directly linked to causing cancer. Um, so whether you're exposed to it through your household products or it's a chemical that you're exposed to in the workplace or in test animals as well. Bioaccumulation, that refers to you, the body doesn't get rid of it. So it just continues to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. So like pesticides do this. And so you can get bioaccumulation. For, so let's say um, a fish in the sea gets mercury, then we go and eat the fish and we get mercury just because we ate the fish that had mercury. So that's a very simplified example of bioaccumulation. So we're going to... Um, introduce a number of concerning chemicals to watch out for. And you might, um, you're gonna hear that phrase endocrine disruptor come up a number of times. And uh, for me, this is the most concerning because again, that endocrine system literally affects every single system in the body. And this is something that as a mother, I think of because I have two boys, but even if I had girls, I'd be concerned about this. I want to be a grandmother someday. And if there's something that I'm using in my house or giving to them to use on their own bodies and, you know, for bathing and so forth, I want to know the impact that that's going to have long term. I might not see it today. I might not see that impact a week from now. I might not even see it a year from now. But as it accumulates in their body and starts messing with the natural balance of their hormone and their endocrine system, I might not see it until all of a sudden they can't have kids. And then we've got a big problem on our hands. And that's just not a, you know, the way that I want to go. So we're going to do kind of a, a quick biology recap here. We've got the pineal gland, and that's where you, it produces the melatonin, um, a serotonin-derived hormone, and which this is something that affects your sleep uh, patterns. It can affect, uh, the endocrine system also involves the hypothalamus, and that controls body temperature, hunger, important aspects of um, parenting and attachment behaviors, our thirst, our fatigue, and again, sleep. You know, hey, anybody out there ever have uh, some trouble sleeping? Then we've got the pituitary gland, and this is our master gland that helps control growth and blood pressure, certain functions of the sex organs, thyroid gland, metabolism, and some, some aspects of pregnancy, childbirth, nursing, kidneys, temperature regulation, and even pain relief can be connected with the pituitary gland. Then we've got the thyroid gland. It controls how quickly the body uses energy, makes proteins, controls the body's sensitivity to other hormones. That means like whether it's receptive to. Then we've got the thymus, and that's a big part of the immune system. The adrenal glands are also part of the endocrine system. This produces the hormones that you absolutely can't live without, including, including your sex hormones, cortisol. And cortisol actually helps you respond to stress and has many other important functions. Then, of course, we've got the pancreas, which is a vital part of the digest digestive system and a very critical controller of our blood sugar levels. Then you've got the testes and ovaries, and that's your male and female reproductive glands. So to sum it up, we can see that the endocrine system really regulates the sleep, the immune system, reproduction, digestion, energy, and basically every function in the body in one way or another. So knowing this... And we're thinking about if we know a certain chemical can affect all of these things, would you still want to choose to purchase that and keep that in your house and to, to use it? 
Um, so yeah, chemical cocktail. It, it, it actually looks pretty good, but <laughs> I want you to imagine that maybe that's um, full of things that, that you don't really want. So, but in isolation, any substance, I don't know, let's take a simple example, like let's say hair dye. It can be relatively safe by itself, but can become harmful when it's combined with another substance. So you've, we have to be careful of the consumer cocktail. Um, a lot of people have the mindset that everything's fine as long as it's in small amounts of chemicals or toxins in these products, but there's really no way that, you know, we think, oh, there's no way that it could really affect my health that much. It's only a tiny, tiny amount. But the EPA has stated that small amounts of chemicals are not harmful to the body. Okay, but what happens when we add small amounts from every single product we use every single day, every single week, every single year for our entire life? So a small amount that's in your soap today, your personal care products, your body lotion, that shampoo, um, hand soap, cleaning products, all these little things, they add up to big problems and they can put a very significant burden on your body. So if you picture yourself, so there's all these different things. You got vehicle exhaust, heavy metals. I mean, all of these things kind of create that, uh, that chemical soup, if you will. So if you picture yourself as a glass and you keep adding liquid to it, eventually it's going to overflow over the top. And that's basically a good analogy or a simple um, picture for you to, to put into your mind about what something called body burden is. You're fine until one day you aren't anymore. So can anyone out there relate to that? Ever you know, heard about that? Oh, I was fine, 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 then boom, all of a sudden I wasn't. And you may have seen this happen with some people you, you know and love. So consider this. Some chemicals accumulate in our bodies over time, and the impacts may show up a long time after we've been exposed to them. And some chemicals can be harmful or more toxic when they're in combinations with other things. And unless you're a chemist, you wouldn't know that you're creating that harmful combination of the chemicals. Chemicals can have more impact during certain periods of development, like in the womb, during infancy, and most definitely during puberty. And who is the population of people that uses like 50 million products before they ever walk out the door? It's our teenagers. So it's something to really keep in mind. Even tiny doses can be really potent. So people say, well, but it's such a small amount. Um, has this ever thought ever cross your mind, oh, it's just a small amount, it can't be all that bad, and you know, I've been using these for years, and I, I think I'm, I'm really just fine. So you wanna consider all those effects of bioaccumulation, that the body is able to break down a lot of the toxins that we're exposed to. That's what the liver and the kidneys are really effective at, but there's a lot that, that we can't break down, and that a lot of the things that the body cannot break down it will take it and encapsulate it in the adipose tissue. That's our fat. In order to get it away from our vital organs, like our, you know, the ones that matter the most. So, and these toxins can cause extra stress on the liver also while it's processing. It's like the liver never gets a chance to, to rest. Sometimes we see some things like um, it'll come out through the skin. And when all of a sudden an unexplainable rash happens, Sometimes maybe, oh yeah, I put X on my skin and that was that, but sometimes it's like the, the body's just kind of going, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. You just gave me more than I can handle. My glass is overflowing at this point. So um, just because a kitchen cleanser promises a germ-free environment, it doesn't mean that there's not a hid hidden danger of toxicity. And the Toxic Substance Control Act, which is such a hilarious name to me, would it surprise you to know that in the United States, it was passed in 1976, and it hasn't been updated to it at all since 1976. There are a few major gaps, severely criticized by non-governmental organizations, academics, the scientific community, um, even some government agencies for failing to effectively regulate the safe use of chemicals in this country. 
Instead, you know what we do? We don't require chemical manufacturers to demonstrate that their products are safe before they go into use and, and be distributed out to all of us. Instead, this law that was from 1976, it imposes a nearly impossible burden on the government to prove actual harm in order to control or replace a dangerous chemical. That's something that a lot of people aren't aware of. So federal oversight really hasn't kept pace with science or rapidly expanding production and the use of chemicals. And companies just don't have a very clear or even a basic safety review before they're using a chemical in consumer products. And the EPA has very little power to remove the hazardous chemicals that are already in the marketplace. So, um, of course, the skin, when we cut whatever we come into contact with, it gets absorbed into our bloodstream and gets integrated into our body tissues. The skin is not a coat of armor on our bodies like a lot of people think. Uh, of course, it's, you know, it generally protects our, our body, but it is also highly permeable. And if you think about what happens when you rub a lotion into your hands, it disappears into your skin, right? That's because the skin is actually permeable. So if that lotion isn't pure and clean and is loaded with a bunch of endocrine disrupting chemicals in it and perfumes and thing, you know, who knows what else, that, guess what, is going right into your bloodstream as well. So why are kids more vulnerable than adults are? Well, um, they're more vulnerable because they are smaller than we are. And just based on their body size, they tend to eat more food and breathe in more air for their body size than an adult would. So they're getting a higher dose of whatever it is. They also have the whole hand to mouth, everything with kids that goes right into their mouth. And, um, they're just not as able to process and eliminate chemicals as effectively as an adult can. And the exposure to certain environmental chemicals during pregnancy or early childhood, when they may be sensitive to developmental um, effects, it can result in negative effects on children's health. Um, you know, again, they're undergoing a lot of rapid development. And young children had, tend to, because they're just starting to eat, they don't tend to eat the wide variety of food that adults do. And so as a result, they could eat a larger quantity per body weight on um, compared to an adult. And so if that food has a pesticide on it, that's something that they're getting a pretty solid exposure and dose to. Um, they tend to spend more time in contact with the, the floor because they're learning to crawl. And again, they put things into their mouths and that means that they could be accidentally ingesting some harmful chemicals that way. So there's just a lot of things that we want to be mindful of when it comes to the little ones and in, in what we have in our environment. So this is why it's so important that we educate ourselves, just like we're doing tonight on this call, to find out what toxins we are regularly exposed to and the ways to limit or to reduce our exposure and how we can use some safer and more effective alternatives. So don't be overwhelmed. I know I just probably scared most of you. It's good to know what's out there because if you're not having that simple awareness, then you're not going to know what you want to not bring home into your house or what you want to look for within your house to remove it out of your house. So we're just here to educate ourselves on the ingredients to avoid, but it's, it's not quite enough to be aware. It's really time at this point, once you are aware to start taking action and focusing on the things there's, because if I go out to the, the store, sometimes you see the sign, it was recently sprayed by pesticide as you're walking into the grocery store. I can't control that. You know, I, I, I might be able to talk to the shopkeeper or whatever, but it's their house, they're, technically it's their shop and they're going to do what they're going to do. And so I am by accident going to get certain exposures to things. So the way I look at it is there are things I cannot control. I can't control that it's a bad air day, but I can control what, what happens in my own home. So what we do, and when you know better, you of course do better knowing what ingredients to avoid. So what we do is we consider the items that we use most frequently and most often. So you would think about, okay, think about your morning. 
And you wake up in the morning, what are the things you start touching as you get into the shower? When you get out of the shower, do you do any kinds of cleaning? What about any dishes? All those kinds of things that we use the most often. Think about it going through your day. What are the regular things that you're exposed to? And how about the foods that you might tend to get all the time? Have you considered that maybe a particular fruit or vegetable that it might be a good idea to either buy organic or to make sure that you've got some way to really uh, clean things off. So what we recommend doing is to replace the non-negotiables. And you, if you went through your list, like I would encourage you maybe after this presentation to walk through your house or think through your day about what you are exposed to and just go ahead and write a list of potential things that uh, you want to get rid of. There are probably a lot of other items on your list. And the first step, though, is to really focus on the things that you can control by replacing the items that you use the most frequently. Here are some examples of uh, a lot of things that people want to replace. Air freshener, for me, would be a numero uno top one. I get it. Nobody wants to have the weird dog smell or the, the funky teenager smell. I don't either. <laughs> but I have found a way to not have that smell and yet still not expose my family to all the toxins that are in those plug-ins and, 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 and candles and things like that. Toothpaste, remember I said it's got triclosan in it. That toothpaste is going in your mouth and that buccal cavity that's under your tongue, that's very permeable and it goes very quickly, even more quickly than the skin, right, it's a mucosal membrane, so it goes right directly into the bloodstream and that would be triclosan going right into the body. Um, you know, your hand or body soaps, it's the time of the year when people are washing their hands a lot, dish soaps, uh, household cleaners, laundry detergents, dryer sheets, one of my biggies, this is one that, uh, apart from household cleaners, the, my biggie place that I recommend that people start is with the laundry detergent. Why? Because it's a 24-7 item. It's not the, oh, well, I only clean my house once a week kind of item. We are wearing our clothing 24-7. We're either in our pajamas, we're in our day clothes, or we're sleeping on sheets that have been laundered more often than not with dryer sheets or some sort of a laundry detergent that has a synthetic fragrance. And I can tell you, I can smell, peop I can smell you from eight feet away when, <laughs> when people launder with that kind of stuff because my, um, my nose, since I've removed all the synthetic fragrances, I'm, I'm very sensitive to those smells and those smells are much bigger than I think people are aware of when they're around it all of the time. So that would be probably a big one that I would replace in addition to um, household cleaners. So um, what, you know, we need to know like what do we replace things with? And this is where Young Living is here to help. Young Living is known for its large selection of the pure authentic essential oils, of course, because they've got the farms and the seed to seal and, and um, quite frankly, we're just ingredient snobs. There are a lot of companies that claim to be natural and upon examination, they aren't even close to being as big of an ingredient snob as Young Living is. So that's something that if you're going to be proud about being a snob, being, be proud about being an ingredient snob. And we, we have a lot of essential oil-based products, and we have a wide selection of very safe, naturally derived plant-based products that are for the entire home. And we, so we've got these great alternatives to those harsh cleaners and, and uh, personal care products that could potentially be endocrine disruptors that are just loaded with chemicals because Young Living really does care very deeply about people and about integrity and it cares about wellness and has created some of the highest quality, most effective and purest products just to help people like us, to help, re help us reduce the risk of toxic chemicals because they know you can put all the oils on you want to all day long and, and eat all your supplements and do all that kind of stuff. But if you're still exposing yourself to a lot of toxic chemicals, you're just going to constantly be, you know, shoveling snow while there's a snowstorm, so to speak. So um, this, this kind of highlights the seed to seal approach and it embodies every single aspect of uh, quality and young living. And of all the essential oil companies out there, why would you choose 
Young Living above the others? And what makes Young Living stand out? Well, we're the world leader in essential oils, and we believe that your family deserves to harvest the benefits of nature's solutions every single day without a single compromise. And our commitment to purity and the stewardship of the earth is embodied in kind of a, a unique proprietary process that we call the seed to seal. And there literally is no other company that can match what Young Living does in to ensure the purity and the potency of the highest quality essential oils out there on the market. So of course it, you know, it, it starts with the seed and um, the seeds that we use are selected for their ability to become botanicals with the really high levels of bioactive compounds. And then we grow those seeds using cultivation practices that are dedicated um, to responsible and sustainable. And that's important to me that it's sustainable growing and harvesting methods. Then we just still am using our, you know, uh, gentle proprietary techniques. And this is, this is another area of expertise that Young Living has from years and years of experience. And to guarantee consistent, verifiable quality, our oils are tested in Young Living's own internal labs, as well as outside third-party facilities. And finally, each essential oil is carefully bottled and labeled with a pretty little label with state-of-the-art equipment. So let's talk really quickly about the Thieves line. The entire Thieves product line is infused with our popular and powerful Thieves essential oil blend. And this is a proprietary combination of cinnamon bark oil, lemon, rosemary, eucalyptus, and clove essential oils. And Gary formulated this essential oil blend while he was studying at the Warwick University in London, England, back in 1991. And he was spending many hours researching essential oils and, and what the history was on the different oils. And he probably read 17 different versions of this thieves story. Some claim that there were four thieves and others claim there were 40. And many of these legends took place in the 15th century, but still others were putting the date at the 18th century. So you can see record keeping was a little bit sketchy back then. And the formulas varied a little bit, one store from one story to the next, each one mixing in a collection of different herbs and spices kind of into a vinegar solution. And through Gary's research, he was led to four key botanicals, clove, cinnamon, rosemary, and lemon. And these were the ones that were mentioned again and again within the herbs that were combined in these vinegar solutions. So he took the essential oils of those botanicals and he combined them with eucalyptus essential oil to make the thieves oil blend. So some people didn't know that that story behind the thieves. So we've infused thieves into a bunch of personal care, oral care products and cleaners to create that safe, gentle and effective products that you guys can use, I use them all the time, in your home to support and kind of enhance your family's wellness. And the key thing here is to not place a burden on the body. So you can see that big long list. This is what it's free from. Parabens, triclosan, phthalates, phosphate, dyes, synthetic ingredients, fluoride, preservatives, perfume, formaldehyde. That's a lot of things that it's free of. So that's a, that's a really good, attractive list. Um, so then we've got the household cleaner. This is one of my very favorite, favorite, favorite products because it's so cost effective. It's so easy to use. And I can make up a concentration that's a little more concentrated if I want to make a, like a stain remover the spray bottle that I keep in my laundry room to kind of pre-treat laundry. I can create an all-purpose one that I literally use on my counter and my bathtub. I mean, I use it pretty much everywhere. And I really like that. It's got the smell of thieves. So you've got that cinnamon and clove kind of smell. And it, it just, it's so pleasant smelling. Um, everyone who's ever smelled, it's like, wow, I would want to clean a little bit more using this. And it can be used on any surface in your home, your office. It can be used on fabrics, upholstery, carpet floors, walls, dishes, and more. And it even works great on mirrors and windows, leaving those streak free. Um, you can use it to clean your toilet, your car, your carpet. I mean, literally any surface it can be used for. And so this is a great little slide because it shows you can replace all of these with the Thieves Household Cleaner. And this is just a couple, and you get this when you buy the Thieves, you get these dilution ratios on the bottle telling you how you would use it. So it's really versatile and cost effective. This shows that you, in a 16 ounce bottle, you can get 29 
at medium degreasing. But I can tell you that for sort of an all-purpose, I've gotten a lot more bottles than that uh, from it. So it's about a cap full or two. Sometimes I do it stronger. Sometimes I do it a little bit more diluted. But it's really potential. And that graphic gives you a good example of that. So now let's look at some of the personal care with Thieves. The personal care products are really, um, I think, the perfect addition, you know, place to start baby stepping the rooms in your house. The foaming hand soap is absolutely one of my favorites. And when people come over to my house and they go into my restroom and they come out and they've washed their hands with the Thieves foaming hand soap, they go, what is that soap in your sink? Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And they'll sit here and they'll smell their hands like, that smells so good. I want to get some of that. So people enjoy washing their hands. And not only that, but it's not harming them. It's actually good and protective of them. So it's a great alternative to the, a lot of the commercial stuff that's out there. And it's not going to strip your skin. It, you know, it's got nice little conditioners for the skin. And then there's the bar soap too that's got um, enriched with moisturizing plant oils like palm coconut, jojoba, olive oil. It's got some additional botanical extracts in there like wolfberry to help cleanse and purify the skin. Then we've got our convenient stuff, the on-the-go cleaners. And with that, we've got the Thieves Spray, which is perfect for moms, like the diaper bag. You want to spray off that grocery cart. I've heard of people making sure that they take it with them. When they go on airplanes, they like to spritz down the seat, especially if they're traveling between fall and spring and they, don't, they know they're going to be in that contaminated air on the airplane. They'll spritz down the seat that they're going to go sit on and their, their uh, tray table in, in front of them. Um, and then you've got the waterless hand purif purifier, and this is safe and gentle enough even for kids to use to refresh and cleanse the hands, especially if soap and water are not an option. And even though it comes in that tiny little bottle, you guys, you only need like less than a pea-sized amount in order to cover your entire hand. It works so effectively. And then you've got the, um, the Thieves Wipe. They are great for door handles, toilet seats, you know, just anything that would need a, a quick cleaning. And then, of course, we've got our oral care. We've got several different kinds of toothpaste as well as a mouthwash. Um, You've got dental floss too. There's this is a whole new level of oral care, and I started using the the toothpaste, and then I went in for a cleaning two months later, and the dental hygienist kept checking my numbers. She's like, "Your teeth have really, you know, like your gums. They look fantastic compared to this last time." are you flossing more? What are you doing? And I hadn't been flossing more. And upon reflection, I realized that the only thing that I'd changed really was my toothpaste. So my mouth absolutely loved the thieves toothpaste. Or the only other thing I can think of is it loved the lack of exposure to whatever chemicals I'd been using in the other toothpaste that I was using before. So that's another possibility. So you're just for really incredibly clean teeth and gums, use the thieves toothpaste and mouthwash to freshen your breath without that harmful icky stuff that you find in mouthwash, like SLS, you see dyes in there to make it blue or green or whatever, artificial flavors, preservatives. Um, and we've got a bunch of different toothpaste you can see on this slide. We've even got a kid toothpaste. So uh, although I know a lot of adults that like the, the kid sense toothpaste, but if your kid eats like, you know, half a tube, you don't really have to be stressed out. If a kid eats half a tube of regular toothpaste you buy in the store, you need to be calling poison control. And a lot of times they'll tell you just call 911 because it's something that's potentially um, very serious, but not with Young Living's toothpaste. So there's the Aroma Bright. So again, no fluoride, no dyes, no SLS. It's all good stuff for you. So let's go into the kitchen. Um, this is something that was just, just came out not too long ago, and these are all naturally derived ingredients. It, it's so fantastic. It cleans your dishes without any of those chemicals, dyes, or synthetics. Because if you think about it, when we're washing our dishes, if we don't get all of that soap completely rinsed off and then we go to eat our food, we're picking up whatever we just washed our dishes with. And um, I feel really confident and really good knowing that it's with a uh, very clean, very green dish soap. And I'm telling you, it foams beautifully. One of the things that I like to do is I will put a little bit in a foaming soap container and I use that for cleaning and that just stretches it a little bit longer. And, it, and when you've got teenagers that overuse too much soap, it, it helps us not go through it too much. But the oils that are in it, you've got your jade lemon and bergamot and you've got some other 
um, plant-based ingredients in there. Okay, laundry soap. I already mentioned this a little bit. Again, it's a plant-based formula. It naturally washes your clothes, leaving them completely clean without any chemicals or synthetic residues. It's got some natural enzymes and some powerful essential oils to add to the formula strength. And this is really gonna leave your clothes fresh and clean with a very faint, not knock you over kind of citrus scent, which I like. So it smells clean, but it's not like you're wearing a perfume or anything. And the Thieves Laundry Soap can be used in all kinds of washers, including those high efficiency ones. And it's a highly concentrated formula. And it'll probably get about, it says 64 loads with 32 ounces. What I have found of my family of four, and I do a fair amount of laundry, is it lasts me about two months. So I think it probably depends on um, the family. But again, you're not gonna find the formaldehyde, the synthetic perfumes, any of that stuff in there. Then we've got the fruit and veggie wash. And the Thieves Spray uh, spray and Soak is what it's called, is got those, again, naturally derived ingredients and the cleansing power with the Thieves Oil in it to wash your produce at home or if you get the spray to wash it when you're on the go. So imagine you're in the airport, you pick up an apple at the kiosk and you're thinking, ugh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to wash this because I, you know, I don't know who's touched it or whether it's clean. You can take that, that um, veggie wash, spritz it, let it sit there for a second, and then just kind of wash it out. But it's got the, a plant-based ingredient that um, just really effectively removed the dirt, wax, and other surface impurities. Um, if you get the bigger thing, you just basically take a, pour, a cap full of it into a bowl of water and add your fruits and veggies that you just brought home from the grocery store. Let it sit in there for a minute or so, and then you rinse it off and off you go. And this is the Thieves Spray that's really a convenient size, great for travel, and um, it's got lime and Thieves Oil in there. It, just, it doesn't affect the taste or make it taste weird. This is the uh, dishwasher uh, detergent. And this is biodegradable cleansing agents and enzymes. And it removes the toughest grease and baked on food and the dishes come out without any chemical taste, food particles, all that kind of stuff. So um, again, no dyes, it's phosphate free. It's got a safe, sustainable formulation. It removes dried on food and it's a very environmentally uh, friendly formula. So um, what they do, it's really safe to use in the automatic dishwashers and you just use one tablespoon per load with that. So it's not about spending more because I know a lot of people think, oh, natural stuff and organic stuff, it costs more and, and I just can't afford to be safe and clean. So it's not about spending more, it's about spending better. And how many of you have heard this statement? Well, you know, you, you, you've talked about, well, I love the idea about the natural stuff, but I'm on a budget. So if you instead adopted the idea that if you're just switching out a few products that we can make our homes healthier and more chemical free. So we're just baby stepping our way through it. And we can teach others how small changes that you might make every day can add up to having that safer home and a healthier family. And it's really just the small changes that are needed. So you're already buying the household items like your soap and your laundry detergent from the grocery store. So you might as well spend your money more wisely on plant-based products that are infused with these powerful benefits of the essential oils. What if we took the money that we would spend otherwise like at Target and so forth on those products that could be contributing to sickness and instead allocate those same dollars back into building up our home to make it a healthy home and to make our bodies healthy. So allocating those same dollars that we're already spending back into monthly orders, um, you know, from a place like Young Living to bring in the healthier, safer products. Uh, I mean, to me, it just sort of makes sense. So, you know, what we recommend is just uh, try a product each month. You know, you just add it into your budget. Of course, Essential Rewards is one of the best ways to do this because anything that you're buying, you're going to be getting points back for. Well, what does it mean to get points back? Well, you accumulate points like in a bank and then you can go on and say, well, I want to order this or I want to order that through a, one of the quick orders and you can just use points to make that purchase. So it, it, you end up with a lot of free product. And again, it's just small, simple changes. And within 12 months, 
you will have not only significantly reduced the impact of the toxic chemicals in your home, but you will have been able to get a bunch of free products along the way. So when it comes to making big kinds of changes, you don't have to make a big dramatic jump and, and uh, max out your credit card just to swap out everything you've got now for what you want to change it over to. We're talking about baby steps, a little bit every single month. So big changes really do start with small steps every day. And that, you guys, is that is that. So um, does anyone have any questions about what's going on? I do have a chat screen if you guys wanted to send any questions. OK, hang on, I see one. Oh, wait, what happened? Where'd it go? Hmm. Oh, that's from Faye. All good. You're welcome, Faye. So no one else has any questions? Okay.